Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm Pastor Abraham for Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church Incorporated. Amen. It's so nice to be before you on this morning. God is worthy to be praised, and there is none like him. Amen. Amen. And we truly, 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 truly bless the name of our God and the rock of our salvation, and we thank him for another day to give him glory, to give him honor, and to give him praise. The Bible said, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So today we come in, amen, and we want to exalt his name together along with you all. At this time, we're going to bring before you none other than Deacon Assistant Anthony Abraham. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many want to bless the Lord in this place? In our own separate homes, want to bless the Lord. So please pray for me in Jesus' name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Yes. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul and all that is within me, I will bless your name. 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 Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory. Oh, my soul. How many can say that? Bless the Lord. Yes. Oh, my soul. Bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. I'll bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. For the Lord is holy. He's mighty. And he's righteous Hallelujah. and worthy. I'll bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, he is holy, he's mighty and righteous, yeah, and worthy. Bless the Lord. Bless him. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, I bless the Lord. Oh, my soul, for he is whole. Oh, holy, are you Lord God Almighty? Yes. And worthy is the Lamb, Lamb, worthy is the Lamb. Glory. You are holy. How many know that? Holy, 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 holy. Are you Lord God? Hallelujah. Almighty. Whoa, glory. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Ooh. Yes, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. God. Yes, you are holy. Yeah. Are you Lord God Almighty? And worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. You are righteous. Yes. If you know he's righteous, sing righteous. Hey, hey. Are 
are you Lord God oh, Glory, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. You are my peace. Hallelujah. You know he's the Prince of Peace. My peace. Oh, yes, he is. You are. Are you Lord God? Almighty. He's almighty. Holy and worthy is the Lamb. Ooh. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy. You are glorious. We can sing glorious. 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 Oh, yes, he is. Are you Lord God? Almighty. Oh, glory. And worthy is the Lamb. And worthy is the Lamb. You are holy. So we can, I will bless your name. So that's why we do it. Go ahead. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. I will bless. Your name, hallelujah. Glory, blessed be his holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will bless your name. I will bless your name. Hallelujah. Worthy is the lamb. You are holy. Hallelujah. You are righteous. And you are Hallelujah. glorious. And Hallelujah. we bless your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you. We love you. We praise you. We glorify you. We magnify you. We ask you that you will have your way on today. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, send forth a rhema word. Touch the ears of the hearers. Cause them to hear what thus saith the Lord. Oh, God, use this vessel according to your perfect will. Let's magnify your name because you and you alone are worthy. Have your way and we glorify you. In in Jesus' name, amen. We bless the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There is none like him. Amen. You will hear me say that on a constant because it is true. There is none like him. In yes. heaven, nor in the earth below, there is none, absolutely none like him. Oh, God. And for this cause, we bless his holy name. Amen. On today, we're going to the book of St. Matthews, the sixth chapter, sixth chapter of St. Matthews, verse 11, and then we're going to drop down to verses 24 through 34. St. Matthews, the sixth chapter, verse 11, drop down to verse 24 through 34. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but thou, when thou prayest, I'm sorry, verse 11, give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts. Verse 24, no man can serve two masters. For neither either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore, I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies 
of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet, I say unto you, this is Jesus talking, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, say ye, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things doth the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first, number one, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Now I want to go back to verse 11 of that sixth chapter. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And I'd like to leave a topic with you on this morning. God will provide your daily bread. God will provide your daily bread. I didn't say mother will provide, daddy will provide, husband or wife will provide. Amen. But it is God that will provide, though he may use them, amen, for your very provision. God will provide. Amen. We realize that during this time of COVID-19, this COVID-19 pandemic, that many people are losing a lot of things. Amen. People are wondering when will it end? When will this all be over? Amen. They're losing jobs, losing money. Amen. From some of their stock, amen, some of their retirement benefits, amen. I heard a lady on the news talking about her retirement and she owned a business and she was saying that she used her retirement, amen, to fund her employees. That means that she no longer has retirement if she used all of it to fund her employees. Amen. And sometimes uh, it seems like there is just no way out. We don't know which way to turn. Some people may be saying right now, amen, but I would have you to be encouraged, uh, amen, that God himself is a provider. Amen. He knows how to open up a door and he knows how to make a way out of no way. Amen. I know that we like to be able to rely on our jobs. Amen. And on our own abilities. Amen. But sometimes God wants to get our attention. Amen. He wants us to come to the realization that if he don't provide for us, amen, there will be no provision. We really cannot provide on our own without God's ability and capability, amen, without God's resources, amen, and without God's help, amen. We need God to be our ultimate provider, amen, and I believe that he's trying to draw our attention, amen, to that very fact on this time, at this time, during this pandemic Amen. That we're dealing with. Uh, amen. A lot is being lost. Uh, amen. And we don't want to act like it is not real. Uh, we don't want to act like we just ought to sweep it over. We have to come to the realization that people are truly, truly suffering. Uh, amen. And people, uh, amen. Some of them are on the verge uh, of a very breakdown on today. 
Huh? Amen. But I come to encourage you. Huh? Amen. If you're on the verge of a breakdown, huh? that if you turn it over to the Lord, huh? that He's well capable and He's well able huh? to bring you out. Huh? Amen. He don't have to let him to give you a job huh? in order to take care of you. Huh? But I come to tell you today uh, that God will provide uh, your daily bread. Yes. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. We can understand that things are becoming scarce. Huh? Amen. In our land uh, as well as other people's land. Huh? Amen. Things are becoming scarce. Huh? Amen. Jobs are scarce. Huh? Amen. Some of the things that we consider to be essential uh, that perhaps they're not as essential as we think they really are. Ah, uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Huh? Amen. Toilet tissue. Uh, amen. There are still some places that you cannot really find much toilet tissue. Uh, amen. But I'm going to just interject right here. Uh, amen. It may not be the kind of toilet tissue that you are accustomed to or that you would so desire, but I want you to know that Wegmans uh, do have some toilet tissue. Uh, I just want to throw that in for some of you. Uh, amen. That's looking for toilet tissue. Uh, amen. In some of these stores that we normally would frequent. Uh, amen. If you don't frequent Wegmans, I'm telling you, go to Wegmans. They have some toilet tissue there for you. Now, I also want to talk about uh, sanitizer. Sanitizer uh, seems to be very hard to find today. I can't even find sanitizer. Amen. But I praise God for one of our saints that work in a store. Amen. And she was able to obtain one bottle of sanitizer. Amen. For me. And I appreciate uh, what she has done. Amen. But it's hard to come by. But I did hear that you can get some aloe vera. Amen. And if you have some alcohol, mix the aloe vera with the alcohol and that will make your sanitizer. Amen. Just interjecting a couple of things to help somebody out because we all need some help in this day and in this time. Amen. To survive and to make it through this pandemic. Amen. So I realized that many things have become scarce because of the lack of provision for jobs. Amen. Income have become scarce for some individuals. And some people may be saying right now, you talking about scarce, I have a zero. That's what they may be saying. But I come to tell you, if you have the Lord, amen, you never have a zero. You have everything that you stand in need of because God will provide, amen, your daily bread. Amen. Uh, many are losing their loved ones. Amen. They are in a time of bereavement. Amen. And may have lack of encouragement. Uh, but I want you to know that God is able to encourage you. Amen. To give you the strength to continue on. Uh, if you just hold on to God's unchanging hand. Uh, amen. Everything will be all right. Hallelujah. I realize that there are now people that have uh, become very stressed out and they need stress relievers. Uh, hallelujah. And one of the relievers that you can use is exercise. Amen. Exercise can be a stress reliever or stress reducer. Amen. You may be also in need of some positive communication. There are so many people that's complaining day in and day out about our situation that we're dealing with. Oh, I got to stay home. None of the stores are open. I can't get my nails done. Can't get my hair done. Oh, I can't go buy anything. Oh, can't get no clothes. Can't get any shoes. Well, you can actually shop online for those types of things. Amen. There is really no need for us to complain because there are places that are so much worse off than what we are on this very day. Amen. They're not worried about going to get their hair done. Amen. They're worried about their very survival. There are still places that have unclean water. Amen. But we still can find some water. So 
somewhere. Uh, even if you have to get it out of your spigot. Amen. Get it out of your sink. Amen. You have running water that have been, have a purification system in place. Amen. So you're not as bad off as many people are. Amen. You're talking about a hairdresser. Many places don't even have a hairdresser where they can go to. Amen. There are things that we can do to our own hair. And yes, I do feel bad for some of those that don't know how, amen, to do their own hair. Amen. I feel sad for you, but you can go on YouTube. Amen. And they will teach you how to do some things with your hair. You see how blessed we are? Some people don't even have that benefit of being able to go on social media, amen, and find a way to do something for themselves. So we are very blessed. There is no need to complain about these things that we may consider to be necessities because in actuality, they really are not necessary. Necessities are things that you need in order to survive, in order to live. You need food. You need water. Amen. These things are necessary and God will provide these necessary things. When you are a child of God, especially, you really don't have to worry because he's going to see to it that you have them. Amen. I pray that I'm encouraging somebody Glory. right now. Amen. We're living in a time that people are frantic. They're frantic right now. They're on the verge of losing their very minds because they are worried. They're worried about their daily things, their daily needs, their daily provisions. But let me explain it to you. Sometimes it's not really about the daily things. We're so worried about tomorrow. We're worried about the rest of this weekend. We're worried about next month. And we're worried about how we're going to get the bills paid next month when we're in this month. And the Lord is trying to encourage us and trying to get us to understand that there's no need to worry about tomorrow. He has everything in his hand. Let's come Let's, let's consider today and put the day in his hand. Yeah. Let's ask God for our daily bread. Amen. Stop worrying about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to take care of tomorrow. Yeah. God has tomorrow in his hand. So why worry about a day that you don't even know whether you're going to be here or not to even be a part of. But let's worry about, not worry, but let's con consider today and put today in God's hand and depend on God for our daily bread, uh, for our daily provision. Depend on God to work it out and come to our rescue. Yeah. God will provide your daily bread. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his holy name. Glory. Now listen, the Bible tells us about the children of Israel. Amen. When they were in their wilderness journey. See, sometimes God has to take you on a journey that you have never been confronted with. That's talking about this pandemic situation. Most of us have never in our whole in life, our whole lifetime, been involved with such a situation that we're faced with today. Amen. This is a journey that we've never been on in our life. Huh? But I come to tell you that the Lord knows the way through this journey. Huh? And the Lord knows how to bring us out of this 
love and, and they know the way and you don't. I know what I do. I sit back. I relax. I go to sleep. I'm not worried about how to get there because I know they know how to get there. I'm not going to really get worried unless it seems like they're getting worried. When they get lost, now I have a problem. But as long as they're going the way they're supposed to be going, then I can trust. I can believe that they're going to get me out or get me to where our destination is. And it's the same thing with the Lord. You have to realize that God knows the way. He knows the way, the complete way. And if you let him direct you, he's going to get you to that destination. He's going to get us to the other side of this pandemic. This too shall pass. It did not come to stay. It came to pass. How long will it be here? I cannot tell you. I don't know. But I know who knows. God knows. And I know who has the provision. God has the provision. I know who is a way maker. God is a way maker. Israel was placed on a journey that they did not know. He sent them into a wilderness. Listen. But while they were in the wilderness... I can hear the psalm, amen, as the Bible says, Psalms 23, that declares that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Listen to me. I don't care what's going on. God is still yet in control. He's not just in control. He has all control. Amen. He has not taken his hand off of the wheel. He's still staring this thing. He's staring it. And he's steering it in the right direction. I know it might not look like it's going in the right direction. But God is steering it in the right direction. It's getting people to look to God like they've never looked to God before. It's getting some of those that forgot all about God to turn back toward him. Amen. Uh, you see, this thing is doing many things. Uh, amen. It's just not one thing that's happening, but many things are happening. It's bringing people to the realization uh, that they are not in control. Uh, they don't have the last say. Uh, hallelujah. If they had the last say, uh, we would never get sick. Uh, we would never lose our jobs. Uh, uh, everything would go the way we wanted them to. Uh, but God is trying to show us huh? you are not in control. Huh? This is something you can't see. Huh? You don't know where it is. Huh? No matter how hard you can try this and try that okay. huh? and make sure you do all the safety measures because huh? that's what you should do because you're less likely to get it if you use all the safety mechanisms. Huh? But some people are using safety mechanisms and they're still getting it because somewhere, somehow, they might have touched something. Just a little thing that had some COVID-19 on it. And the next day they knew uh, they might have just rubbed their face a little bit. Not even being conscious of what they were doing. And end up with it. Uh, but I come to tell you that God is a healer. And yes, God is a yes, deliverer. Yes. And he can cover you and protect you. Glory. And if you was to get it, he's still able to bring you out. Yes. Amen. And if he don't bring you out here, he can bring you out on the other side. Amen. Which could absolutely be a better place. Amen. Not that we say we want to die. Amen. And prayerfully, none of us will end up in that situation. But if we end up in that situation, we have a hope that is beyond the grave when we know Jesus. See, I can't speak for everybody. Because everybody don't have that hope beyond the grave. But I come to tell you, you can get it on today. When you know Jesus, if you don't know Jesus, you can get to know him. And we're going to try to tell you about it before we leave here on today. You can get to know Jesus. And he will be your rock. Not just a rock, but a solid rock. In times just like this. I'm so glad I have a rock that I can go to. 
I'm so glad. I saw another songwriter say, where do I go when there's no one I can turn to? Who do I lean on? Who do I lean on? Who? When there's no foundation stable. I go to the rock. I know he's able. I go to the rock of my salvation. I go to the stone that the builders rejected. And that's how I go to on today. He's my solid rock. The, the, we say on Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. You understand what I'm saying? If he's not your rock, everything else that you lean and depending on just might fail you. I want you to realize that, but God will never, ever fail. I just want you to know it. So while they were in the wilderness, on their wilderness journey, I heard that the songwriter also said that he anointed my head with oil and my cup runneth over and surely in goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. But before he got to that, he said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. How do you know? Let me give you an understanding about it because somebody might be saying, perhaps you don't know those particular scriptures. And you might be saying, well, what does that have to do with what we're dealing with on today? Let me tell you. See, when the children of Israel came out from Egypt, they carried a little bit with them, but everything runs up. And so at this point in time, they needed God to provide their daily bread. There were no stores. To go to. See, right now we can run to the grocery store. Yes. They might not have everything on the shelf, but they have something on the shelf. Might not be what you want, but it will help you to sustain your body, your physical body. It is food, it is substance. But they were in the wilderness. There were absolutely no stores. There were no restaurants. There were no markets. <laughs> oh no. There were not places that had vegetation. Where they planted the vegetation and the, the vegetables grew up from the ground. They were in the wilderness and they had to keep moving. And so they had to depend on God for their daily sustenance. Their daily bread. But let me tell you what the Lord did. Don't start murmuring and complaining. Because God hates murmuring and complaining. God told Moses, he said, listen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to send manna down from heaven. If things get so bad, God has a way. He is the way. Yes. I know we want to be able to go to the market, but if there were no markets, this will not be the first time that God has taken care of his people without the market. Your input is invalid. He's still the same God. He can take care of us. We got to depend on him. We got to trust him. We have to believe on him in the wilderness. No bread. God says, I'm going to send down manna from heaven above. What I want y'all to do is every day, day by day, on a daily basis, stop worrying about tomorrow. God has tomorrow in his hand. Leave it in his hand. On a daily basis, I want y'all to go out every day. I'm going to send it down. Y'all gather it up and take it back into your house. Mm -hmm. The Bible said it tasted like coriander seed. Tasted like some honey mixed with coriander seed. So it seems to me that it tasted pretty good. What God sent down for them on a daily basis. Daily provision. Daily bread. Hallelujah. We got to trust God for our daily bread. Daily provision. Don't worry about tomorrow. You may look in your cabinet 
And it might be by, about bear. It may absolutely be bear. But God knows how to send somebody to you that have gone to the market and God can make that provision for you and for your family. Now, I'm not going to tell you that it's necessarily going to be something that you want. I know how to go through on very little. I've had times in my life that my family have gone through on very little. My husband, myself, and my two children, when they were small children, we had a lot of things, uh, the hard. We came the hard way. We came the hard knocks way. Bumps and bruises. But I realized that it could have always been worse. There was no need to complain because God still provided. But I know how it is to eat one can good. And I'm not talking about a big can good. I'm talking about one of those small cans. One can good going around to feed four people. And you ate that can good for breakfast. You're going to have lunch. You're going to have that. For dinner, you're going to have the same thing. I know how it is. You have the same thing. I know how it is to have chicken, chicken, chicken. And all you have is chicken. You learn how to bake it. You learn how to boil it. You learn how to roll it. You learn how to grill it. You, you learn how to fry. Oh, you can do chicken in the various ways. If chicken is all you have, honey, you can make it different. Different varieties. But be grateful for the chicken. Because you can have absolutely nothing. Some people have nothing. But I come to tell you that God will provide. Yes, he will. God will open doors. God will make ways. God is a provider. You can depend on the Lord. You can. God will provide your daily bread. Not your next week's bread. Not that he can't. Not that he won't. Not like he doesn't do that. But sometimes he is calling us to a wilderness journey of depending solely upon him for our provision. And if you are in that place today, I am telling you, watch God work. Yeah. Watch God bless. Watch God provide your daily substance. Lord. Watch God pay your bills. I know about it. I know about it. Not having the money to pay your bills. Not having the rent money. Going months not having rent money. Because the husband had lost his job. Not that he was a slouch. Because my husband is a very hard worker. But we fell on hard times. Things happen that is beyond your control. We fell on hard times. We didn't have the money to pay the rent. We didn't have the money. We didn't have those things. But our God had those things. And our God provided those things. Months went by not being able to pay the rent. Months. We received the notices. Somebody might be, you, well, they're not supposed to be giving you a notice right now. For the government, you blessed. The government has said that they can't evict nobody right now. You're blessed. Even if you haven't had the money to pay the bills. And you're worried about well, how I'm going to pay it when it come due. God will provide. Trust God. Believe God. Hold on to God. We were in a worse situation. The bill wasn't getting paid. We couldn't pay the bill. Months had gone by. We received the eviction notices. And then we received that notice you know that you get when it's the last time around and the constable is about to come and set yourself out. And it gives you a date that they're coming. We received the warning that the constable was going to come. But our faith was in the God and the rock of our salvation. We took the eviction notice and laid them out before the Lord. And we prayed and we trusted and we believed him. In about 15 minutes or so, a little while before they came to time to set the stuff out, God sent a knock to the door. Did not tell them that we were in need. We didn't tell them. We didn't tell anybody. But God knew. God knew the knock came on the door. With all the 
You can't do it. If you're in a situation and you can't do it, God know you can't do it. It's time to depend on him. He's trying to get you to depend on him. So you got to trust him and know that the God that you serve, he's well able to do it. You got to believe him. It's time to grab a hold to some faith. It's time for us to look to the hill from whence comes our help. All of our help comes from the Lord. You got to know it without a shadow of a doubt that if nobody else helps me, God is going to do it and God is going to fix it and God is going to work it out and God is going to come to my rescue and God is going to deliver me out of this situation and God himself is going to see all of us through. My whole family, he's going to see all of us through. All the way until the end. You got to believe him. And you got to trust him. You got to know that he will. And you got to know that he can. Honey, you got to know that you can rest assured that the promises of God, he will not fail to perform them. Hallelujah. When God say he will take care of you, that's exactly what he mean. Now, when I looked in the word of God in that sixth chapter of the book of Matthews, uh, Jesus was trying to talk to the people uh, and carry the people uh, and telling them uh, that the Gentiles were so worried about what they were going to eat and what they were going to drink and what they were going to put on. But he said to his people, uh, I don't want you to think like that. And I've come to tell you today uh, that God is telling you, uh, I don't want you to think like that. Uh, don't want you to worry yourself uh, about your clothing, uh, what you're going to put on, what you're going to eat, and what you're going to drink. Because uh, your heavenly Father, uh, he knows that you have need uh, of all of these things. Uh, but this is what the Lord has to say to you. Uh, he said, seek ye first uh, the kingdom of heaven uh, and its righteousness. Uh, and all these things uh, will be added uh, unto you. Uh, what you mean, Lord? Uh, before all of this stuff that you're worried about, uh, stop worrying about it. Uh, he said, but seek ye first. Uh, look to the things of God. Uh, look to the kingdom of God. Uh, look to the will of God. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, look at how uh, you can be a better representative uh, for the kingdom of God. Uh, look at the Lord. And say, what else can I do? Huh? Hallelujah, Lord. Huh? To draw men unto you. Huh? For the Bible said huh? that if I be lifted up, said the Lord, huh? up from the earth, huh? I will draw men huh? unto me. Huh? It's time huh? to lift the Lord's name up. Huh? It's time huh? to lift up Jesus. Huh? Not complain, huh? but to lift up Jesus. Huh? To tell the
give you your daily provision of power and of strength. He's going to give you a daily provision to walk upright before him. He's going to give you a daily provision. How do you know what you need to make it through these perilous times on a daily basis? He's going to make ways and open up doors on a daily basis. He's going to let you know that he's there. He's going to make you triumphant over and over again. Amen. When I began to think about the word of God, I'm going back to Psalms real quick. Psalms 23 and 1. The Bible said that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not walk. I come to tell you there are many of you out there that the Lord is not your shepherd. Now don't get angry with me because I said the Lord is not your shepherd. You know whether he's your shepherd or not. If you're not following him, then he is not your shepherd. Ah, Lord, if he's not directing you, he is not your shepherd. Maybe he had been your shepherd, but you strayed away. And when you strayed away, he tried to pull you back into the sheepfold. Amen. But when you turn your back and you just won't allow him to pull you back in, then you are the one that's relinquishing his responsibility to shepherd you. You need a shepherd. The Lord will be your shepherd. The Lord will cause you to prosper. The Lord will give you strength. The Lord will exalt you. The Lord will mount you up upon wings like an eagle. Thank you. Hallelujah. The Lord will do it. You can depend on God. You can trust him. Let him be your shepherd. Listen, Jesus is trying to bring you into the sheepfold where he can be your shepherd so he can provide your every need. That song went on to say when it said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. It said he's making me to lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. Did you hear what I said? He gonna lead you in green pastures. He gonna make sure you have provision. And he gonna restore your soul. He's gonna bring back what you need. He's gonna give you that nourishment. The Lord is going to do it. Now listen to me. Jesus gave us all to make us his sheep so that he could take care of us. So he can make sure that we have our daily bread. Jesus gave his life. He hung, bled, and died on the cross of Calvary. Jesus did it for me, and he did it for you. And he is offering you a way out. He's offering you a breakthrough. He's offering you his directions. Stop trying to figure it out for yourself. Stop trying to make it for yourself. Let God do it. He can make it much easier on you. Now, when he gives you a pathway to take, it's up to you to take that pathway. I'm not saying you absolutely will have to do nothing. But you got to listen for his voice. Listen for his instruction. He knows the way through this thing. He knows the way through it. And he knows how to get us on the other side. And get us there victoriously. The Bible declare. That we already have the victory. We already have it. Because we have it in him. We have it in our Lord. And in our Savior Jesus Christ. You can come to Jesus today. Right now you can come to Jesus. Yes. You can turn your heart toward Jesus. You can seek Jesus. You can call on the name of Jesus. And God can baptize you with his Holy Spirit right now where you are. Fill you with the tongue talking Holy Ghost. Where you are, call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. Call on the name of Jesus. And ask God to save your soul. 
Ask God to fill you with his spirit. Ask him. Ask him wholeheartedly. Surrender over to him. Let him know that you're sorry and you repent. And you're asking him to come on down on the inside and fill you up with that tongue conquering Holy Spirit. And you're going to know that you have it because the evidence of speaking in other tongues as the Spirit of God give you utterance. Hallelujah. God will speak for himself. Yes. He will speak for himself that he abides on the inside. Let him take residence. Residence in your soul. Let him take residence. Call on him right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you also will need the baptism in Jesus' name. In the liquid water. Water. You might not be able to go to church. And somebody take you down in Jesus' name. You can get baptized in your bathtub. Make sure they say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can call up a preacher that you know. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Not the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. They're titles. Don't get mad at me. Read the Bible. None of, God, none of Jesus' disciples baptized in titles. Because they knew what the name was. He said in the name. The name is Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That name moves sin. The blood of Jesus is in that name. It's going to get in that liquid water. It's going to, that liquid water is called your burial. You go down and you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin. Make sure your whole body gets submerged. You might have to do it in parts. All of your body needs to go under that water. The whole thing needs to get covered. Baptize this part and go on down in the other part. And let somebody get you down in that tub and get you baptized. Now, if something, if you need to do it yourself, you need to know that you're getting out of that water. You can get out on your own. Now, I really don't want you to do that by yourself because something like that can be dangerous. Somebody else should be there along with you. But in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you need to be baptized. Get those sins washed away. Rise up to walk in the newness of life. And it's not just symbolic. Jesus himself said, except a man be born again of the water and of the spirit. Yes. And those that say it's just symbolic, then they're contradicting the word of God. Jesus didn't say this is symbolic. No, it is necessary so yes. that your sins can be washed away. It's not just a symbolism. Don't let nobody fool you like that. It's just symbolic. I don't see nowhere in the word of God where they said that. It's symbolic. It is not symbolic. It is necessary. You need it. I already have it. So I can tell you how it is. And I'm so glad I got it. Do you hear what I'm saying? Oh, when I got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of my sins. Oh, a change, a change started taking place immediately in my life. I did not have his spirit yet, but I went on to get it, and I received it, and I'm telling you, it's been going on 41 years, and it gets better and better. Yes. I wouldn't trade it for the world. I'm telling you, it's worth it, and it's worth giving up the things of this world for, and what I'm talking about the things of the world, I'm talking about the carnal things. I'm talking about things that you know were not pleasing to God. It's worth giving those things up for. You'll be able to walk in the newness of life. You'll be able to look yourself in the mirror again. Those of you that don't even want to look yourself in the mirror, you're ashamed of yourself. You'll be able to look yourself in the mirror again. You'll be able to love yourself because you should always love yourself. But some people don't love themselves. But you'll be able to love yourself. He'll teach you how to love yourself. He'll work it from the inside out. He loves you. I love you. The people of God loves you. And it is because the Christ that dwells within us. That we can love everybody. Even if we don't know them. The God in us knows you. And I want you to know. That he wants to bless you. 
And he wants to provide your daily bread. You can trust him. You can depend on him. Now, for those of you who would like to be a blessing to this ministry, and we pray that you would, amen, you can go to the Give LaFi, Give LaFi app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y, Give LaFi, Give LaFi, amen, the Give LaFi app. You can find it in your store on your phone. If you don't have it and download it, go to Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church. All right, on the Giblify app. And when you see my picture, because there's several solid rocks, so you need to look for my picture. All right, with sink, wavy like hair. At the all right, wavy like hair. It's not straight at the time on that picture. Wavy like hair, but it's down, wavy curly. And that's my picture. Pastor Barbara Abraham. Click on that, and you will be given to the ministry, not to me. That's going to the church, Solid Rock Apostolic Faith Church, Incorporated. That goes to the church, goes in the bank for the church. All right, so you're not you're not funding Pastor Abraham. You're funding the church so that the ministry can continue on, and we can continue to do the will of God, Amen, in various ways and reach out, Amen, to this dying nation of people. That's what we want to do. All right, but if you don't have a give give a five. Uh, all you have to do is mail your donation to 523 North Schroeder Street. 523 North Schroeder Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. 523, 523 North Schroeder Street, Baltimore, Maryland, 21223. When you exit out of the page, you will see a flyer. That will give you the address. It will give you give it a five. It will give you also the address to the church in which to mail your donations. We truly appreciate all of you that give. Amen. And we appreciate those that do not have to give. We pray that God will bless you. Amen. And give you another opportunity to do just that. Because when you bless God, he can do nothing else but bless you back. When you bless his ministry, you will see triple and double. He will bless you and bless your household. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you for everyone that is watching today. We ask, Lord, that this word will penetrate their spirit and their heart, that they will give them encouragement, that you will provide for them on a daily basis. They don't have to worry about tomorrow because you hold tomorrow in your hand. They don't have to worry about what they're going to eat, what they're going to drink, nor what they're going to put on. You will provide. Lord, bless those that desire to be saved that are not saved. I'm asking you that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. As the Spirit of God give them utterance. Bless them to go down and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of their sin, that they may be whole and complete, O oh God, in the baptism, O oh God, and that you will cause them to walk in the newness of life. O oh God, bless each and every one. Lord, those that may have encountered COVID, that may be sick right now, healing and deliverance we speak in the name of Jesus Christ. May thy body be healed from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. We speak healing, we speak deliverance. All those that need other types of healing, healing and deliverance right now in in that body. Healing to those pancreas. Pancreas, Lord. Pancreas disease. Healing to the liver disease. Healing to the heart disease. Healing to diabetes. Diabetes. In the name of Jesus. Healing from all of those ailments in the body. Healing and deliverance right now. Healing from mind problems. Healing from mental illness. In the name of Jesus. You got to release them. Release them. Release them. Release yes. them. In the name of Jesus Christ. We declare healing. Right now in this nation, healing in those bodies, healing those of those eyes, healing right now. Whatever you need, healing right now. In Jesus' name, we pray it. Amen. Amen. God bless you and we love you. May you be well.